Welcome to the January 2024 edition of the Pre-Sale Pulse, a real estate show dedicated to everything happening in real estate across Metro Vancouver and the Fraser Valley. I'm your host, Susanna Gonsalves. It's a new year with a new twist on the Pre-Sale Pulse format. Joining me today as my BFF co-host all the way from the other side of the Fraser River is Brittany. Yeah, just just me, Brittany Reimer, and thanks for having me on the Greater Vancouver uh, Pre-Sale Pulse. Um, this should be really fun. Um, happy to be here. Yeah, terrific. Now, um, let's get into things. Today we are filming in the Ashley by Peterson Sales Gallery. You are getting an exclusive look at the brand new sales gallery, not even open to the public just yet. The homes are located in Vancouver's west side at Ash and 35th and will be a boutique collection of one, two, and three concrete west side homes. This location has the best of both worlds located on the quiet tree-lined Ash Street, yet steps away from Oak Ridge and green spaces like Queen Elizabeth Park, Looking forward to our realtor event on January 31st and our grand opening uh, to the public very shortly. Yeah, gr amazing space. Um, definitely come check it out once uh, once they're open to the public. So the first macro snapshot of 2024. Let's make this a good year, Britt. Yeah, I mean, Sue's no doubt that might be up to Tiff Macklem um, more than me, but uh, agreed any changes uh, of note that uh, you can think of that we're looking forward to. Yeah, well, both a lot and not a whole lot has changed in the macro outlook over the break. In Canada, we saw the release of more economic data that supported the picture of a cooling economy. Yeah, I mean, I definitely noticed that uh, the Canadian GDP growth for Q4 in 2023 really looks to be coming in at approximately 0.8% increase. Uh, for reference, that's a cool pace of growth relative to the historical averages. Yeah, and at the same time, it's higher than the unexpected change uh, we got in Q3 2023, where the Canadian economy shrunk by 1.1%. Yeah, and absolutely, it makes you wonder, you know, what that data is suggesting uh, then for TIFF. Will he be able to deliver um, some interest rate good news for the market this year? Yeah, our, our friend TIFF, like, oh. we're, like we're buddies. TIFF, just so you say, it's like TIFF. <laughs> Analysts are still forecasting three to four interest rate cuts throughout 2024. That has not changed. It was a popular saying for quite some time, higher for longer, referring to the widespread belief that interest rates would be sticky on the way down. Now that's largely gone, and the new consensus is that the cuts will happen faster than initially expected. Yeah, and I would just couch that the statement with a, a real warning here. Um, we saw how quickly the narrative shifted from higher for longer, um, as you mentioned, Suze, and in today's climate, complete with new geopolitical complications, we can really see the narrative shift back um, just as quickly. Um, this will be a year where we really need to be prepared for all outcomes and be agile in response to market conditions. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. The uh, The sentiment changed quite a few times over last year, so we shouldn't uh, count our chickens just yet. So two key takeaways here. Economic data over the break continues to show a cooling Canadian economy, which should give the Bank of Canada the room necessary to begin cuts. At the same time, the anticipated schedule of cuts is modest and will rely heavily on the continuation of current trends. So my favorite part, let's talk about the December pre-sale market. Um, what did we see in the last month of 2023, Suze? Yes, well, December was expectedly a quieter month in terms of project launches due to the holiday season and the inevitable holiday burnout. With that being said, we did see three projects brave the holiday season and step into the market just before year end, releasing inventory at the beginning of December. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense uh, to me as well. Three launches is quite low, but it also makes sense for the season, right? What did we see last December in terms of project uh, launches? Yeah, in December 2022, we saw five projects come to market, releasing just over 300 units. Now, looking at the launches in December 2023, they compromise of two concrete and one wood frame development, totaling just over 1,100 units. Yeah, uh, you know what? I remember last year we saw a lot of interest in the smaller wood frame unit format with lower end pricing for consumers, you know, being really worried about those higher borrowing costs with rates interesting, uh, with, with rates inching higher throughout the year, reaching what seems like to be the peak. There appears to be a shift in preference, again, back towards that concrete uh, offering with longer completion timelines. Yeah, absolutely. That trend has been evident throughout 2023, even in the face of tough market conditions concrete projects have managed to tap into enough demand to move their projects forward. Now, especially those projects that are slated to complete in the next four to five years. The projects with earlier completion timelines have not been as successful as many buyers have been looking to lock into today's construction costs, fearing it goes higher, while avoiding today's interest rates and instead opting for a longer term view once the development is complete. Yeah, that's a really great point. And next question that I have, Suze, for you, I feel like I'm peppering you right now, <laughs> is did the projects last month actually capture the demand? 
Yeah, of the 577 units that were released to market, 57% were absorbed. So not bad, really, although more homes could have been released likely if there was a bit more confidence in the amount of demand. We are seeing inventory management strategies happen where not everything is being released at once, given the uncertainty in the market. We are, however, expecting things to get more active as we move into Lunar New Year. Yeah, definitely an interesting uh, next few weeks uh, at hand here. That is definitely positive news. I imagine we can anticipate, you know, something similar here at the end of January and into early February. Yeah, we're forecasting three pre-sale projects in the month of January, bringing just over 780 units to market comprising of two concrete projects and one wood frame project. Yeah, and I, I'm definitely thinking we should expect, you know, that momentum to build as we move into the February and spring market. You know, several developers um, have held off on launching their projects in the later half of 2023, really just in hopes um, to see more traction in the spring. Completely makes sense. Um, there's a sense of cautious optimism in the air right now, but still a watch and see environment as we've seen some programs, you know, teasing to see some very aggressive pricing in the market, which I think is, the right way to go about it in today's environment. Yeah, I agree. So to wrap up our pre-sale market update, there's a couple of takeaways. We ended 2023 with an expectedly quieter month in terms of project launches. But of those projects that did come to market, we have seen decent absorptions, especially for concrete product with longer completion times. All eyes on Lunar New Year with cautious optimism for the spring market just around the corner. Buyers that have previously been on the sidelines are expected to return with renewed interest as the cost of borrowing begins to decline. Yeah, fingers crossed, <laughs> big fingers crossed. All right, Suze, now let's move into our project features. Um, we're gonna start on the Vancouver West Side where we're featuring a boutique collection of one, two and three bedroom concrete West Side homes. And Ashley, here we are. Yeah, as mentioned earlier, we are filming in the presentation center for Ashley by Peterson here in Carisdale. But the project is located on the quiet tree-lined Ash Street, steps away from Oak Ridge and green spaces such as Queen Elizabeth Park. Yeah, what an amazing location, even just pulling up uh, today for the filming, Suze. Uh, Oak Ridge Municipal a Town Centre surrounding Ashley has really evolved into an unprecedented second downtown to Vancouver. Now, Ashley is just a few blocks away from the future world-class urban hub, uh, featuring the best retail and uh, entertainment venues and dining hall, not to mention Vancouver's premier public and private schools. Um, Hillcrest Community Centre, the connectivity to transit hubs such as Oak Ridge and Sky Train Station. Um, I could probably just continue to go <laughs> on and on. <laughs> yeah, that's a mouthful. The project includes three distinct concrete low-rise buildings, each with unique architectural forms and each with their own dedicated lobby. The Berkeley building is the first of the three buildings to launch, followed by the Alma building, which will be unveiled at the grand opening realtor event on Wednesday, January 31st, and the public grand opening soon after. So mark your calendars. Um, now, Sue's. what are they including in terms of uh, amenities? Well, besides everything you just talked about, the indoor and outdoor amenities total just under 6,500 square feet, and they include a fully equipped fitness center, the spa featuring hot and cold plunge pools, a steam room and a sauna. To top it all off, pun intended, the rooftop lounge includes a dining room available all year round for hosting events that seamlessly connects to the outdoor patio with a movable glass wall. You got the iPad ready? I think I'm, I'm ready to go. Ready yeah, to sign, sign up. up. Sign up. A uh, very unique offering in the Canby Corridor. Um, having three buildings, it has scale and amenity program, unlike any other low-rise uh, development in the Canby Street Corridor. So super proud uh, to be supporting this program. And uh, thanks again to the Peterson team for having us here. That's right. Now, since 1988, Peterson has formed collaborative partnerships to bring significant communities to life from the iconic Woodward's Building, the Fairmont Pacific Rim and Frame in Vancouver to the Shangri-La and Rivish Village in Toronto. Peterson Group has an extensive history delivering a range of world-class properties, whether it be from the hospitality sector or mixed-use communities, Peterson Group looks to fulfill its mission on delivering timeless design coupled with unique interiors and extensive outdoor planning. So with all that said, contact the Ashley sales uh, team today to learn a little bit more and stay tuned, of course, for our additional exciting announcements uh, over the coming weeks here. All right, let's talk Brentwood, where Tower B in phase one of South Yards by Anthem and Kingset Capital launched in December. Yeah, so after the success of their first tower uh, that came to market in the beginning of 2023, we're excited to get uh, into the latest details because I know our viewers are anxiously awaiting to hear. Mm -hmm. Their first building sold all 330 released units within a few months of launching. And they saw great success with their one price program where select units were given the same price regardless of the floor they were on. 
Yeah, and we had reported on some of the success Anthem had with this program on a few of their towers. Uh, what's the, been the progress, Suze, on their second building at South Yards? South Yards began their priority realtor program in December, offering select floors to their realtor community, and this was a pretty exclusive group. Of the units released, approximately 70% uh, sold, and Anthem is planning on holding the remaining floors until they launch to the public uh, sometime this year. Yeah, and I mean, we've always thought this is a really interesting approach, you know, given that they've already met their pre-sale construction obligations through the initial tower sales. They have room for that creativity in their sales strategy. There's really no better place to be. And both buildings are set for a simultaneous construction uh, timeline. Yeah, that's right. They offer a variety of unit types from junior one bedroom plans starting at 400 square feet up to three bedroom and den plan uh, sized at 1,093 square feet. Yeah, really great range. Uh, we're really looking forward to, to seeing how their public launch unfolds next year and how that market reacts to that uh, product and form. All right, moving on to a wood frame project in one of our favorite markets, West Coquitlam. Let's talk about Botanica by Qualix Landmark. They started realtor-only previews in late October and began taking suite selections for early preview attendees in November. They've released 136 out of their 239 units. Yeah, and I recall uh, you and Ryan actually spoke about this last month. Um, Sue's launching a project right before the holiday season has its challenges, as we know. And I mentioned earlier, it seems to draw in uh, quite a bit more concrete product later with completion timelines. So how has Botanica um, performed given the, the current landscape, in your opinion? Yeah, I think they started off perhaps a little slower than expected with roughly 20 deals uh, recorded so far. Now, they are in a great location in West Coquitlam, nestled on a quiet residential street, uh, yet conveniently close to neighborhood amenities. We continue to see success in this area, so their slower start could be attributed to the time of year. Uh, buyers have been cautious in the latter half of 2023. They've taken a more wait-and-see approach, especially when it comes to wood frame product, and I think that uh, Bot Botanica saw a little bit of that. Yeah, and this is a great location um, with, with a few other uh, wood frame options and several concrete towers in this neighborhood. This would also be the case of just too much much uh, choice in this market. Yeah, good point. As, as for their floor plans, I like how they've incorporated a flex space into their one bedroom plans ranging from 555 to 605 square feet and starting in the high 500,000s. Yeah, that absolutely seems reasonable. We're starting to see that trend of that flex or junior two bed in, in all markets. Um, by providing the stacked townhome units, they definitely catered to a broader range of buyers as well, which we know, you know, really exists in the neighborhood of, of Coquitlam and there is demand for that. Absolutely. For this specific product type in this area, it's crucial to attract those buyers who might find themselves priced out of concrete and townhome projects. West Coquitlam continues to be a popular choice for various buyer demographics, including first-time buyers, young families, and investors. Offering a diverse range of unit sizes and types provides a wide array of options to cater to these different groups. And I thought they did a good job in their uh, features and spec of sort of being able to cater to all those groups as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that's crucial in every uh, project right now. It's, it's like you can't put all your eggs in one basket and having that diversity of unit mix is certainly an advantage. All right, enough with the pre-sale. Let's talk resale. Yeah, let's uh, let's get right into it. So sales expectedly continued um, on the decline in December at 1,345 properties sold. This is a decrease of 21% from last month, but an increase of 3% from the same t uh, year last same time last year. Right, that's right. Well, December typically marks a slower period for sales. These numbers fell notably behind the 10-year seasonal average by just over 36%. And looking at the bigger picture, sales in 2023 totaled just over 26,000 homes, marking a 10% drop from the total number of sales in 2022 and sitting almost 25% below the 10-year seasonal average for yearly sales. It's hard not to notice. I mean, that is a notable decline, Suze, although I do have to say that despite the lower than average sales numbers, the market has showed great tenacity in 2023, considering the significant hurdles faced you know, through this year, particularly escalating borrowing costs, reaching the highest that they've been in over two decades. Metro Vancouver all, overall has really maintained its status as a sought after place to, to, re to buy properties. Yeah, it's a good point. Demand has remained strong Despite unfavorable market conditions, inventory levels also experienced a decline in December when compared to the previous month by almost 20%. Newly listed properties in December reached just over 1,300 in the region. This is nearly 23% below the 10-year average for the month. Yeah, all great points, uh, Suze. I think overall the supply by the end of 2023 was on par, on closely anyways, with the, with the 10 year seasonal average. So throughout 2023, we did see low inventory levels with potential interest rate cuts becoming more likely in the first half of 2024. The pool of eager buyers will likely expand and it'll be interesting to see if supply will keep face as we move into 
a new phase. Yeah, the real question is, will those dynamics shift significantly when those rates come down? If sales climb, you know, without a corresponding increase in supply, we could see our balanced market conditions shift quickly. Um, a sales to active listing ratio below 12% exerts downward pressure on home prices, while the opposite holds true uh, to a ratio that surpasses 20%. In December, across all property types, the sales to listing ratio stands at 16%. Uh, detached homes have entered into a buyer's market at just over 11% and attached homes and apartments are closer to that, you know, seller's market each at just 20%. And although we have seen the HPI benchmark price slightly de decline by just over 1% month over month, this is to be expected with traditional seasonal patterns. However, a 5% increase year over year speaks to the tenacity of the market you mentioned earlier, proving that even with heightened borrowing costs, much of Vancouver's market uh, appeals remain unwavering. Yeah, so overall uh, throughout December, we observed a continued decline in both sales activity and overall inventory. However, when we are considering the 10 year average, the inventory levels we're entering the new year with are actually quite consistent. Uh, total sales for 2023 fell below the 10 year average, aligning with the expected impacts of buyers limited borrowing power through the raising rate environment this past year. Yeah, however, it seems the year over year price increase indicates sustained demand within our market and with the possibility of interest rate cuts throughout the year, we can expect renewed interest from those buyers that have been waiting on the sidelines. Get off the sidelines. The point is now it's time to buy the next three months. Um, and with that, uh, that is a wrap on 2023 data and the pre-sale pulse. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And if you haven't already, please be sure to check out our Newswire, our daily email roundup of all of the latest breaking news in the world of real estate. Yeah, thanks for joining us for our first pre-sale pulse of 2024. Stay tuned as we follow the ever-evolving real estate landscape. See you next month.